Lord, brothers and sisters. Give honor and glory, amen, unto the King of kings and the Lord of lords, amen. There is none beside him. There is none greater than him, amen. He rules and he reigns. I'm glad that Yeshua, Jesus, lives, amen. And because he lives, we that have put our faith and our trust in him, amen, we can live also not only in this life but also in the life to come amen this is brother williams amen praise the lord and i just want to uh get into this message today i want to try to keep it as short as possible uh i just want to share with you some things that i believe the lord has given me for the body of christ first of all because the church brothers and sisters if you haven't noticed it the church is compromising the church is not standing as a light in darkness as the word of god has told us to do amen if you appreciate what the lord has given me if you benefit from what the lord has given me by in ways of what you are hearing i ask that you would help support this ministry through liking these videos sharing these videos and subscribing to my youtube channel Amen. And also a financial donation. If you so desire, no pressure. You can donate to the ministry at uh, through Cash App at dollar sign Broken Vessel 51. That's dollar sign Broken Vessel 51. God bless you. Amen. I praise the Lord for you. Let's move on in what God has given me. Amen. I want to read from the word of God, first of all. Amen, because we're living in serious times, ladies and gentlemen. We're living in times where we have to be discerning. We have to have ears to hear what the Spirit is saying unto the churches. So I read from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 33, and uh, verses 4 through 6. He says, Then whoso heareth the sound of the trumpet, and taketh not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning. His blood shall be upon him. But he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. Hear the word of God, brothers and sisters. But if the watchman see the sword come and blow not the trumpet and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take away any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. Amen. You know, we have many today in the body of Christ who claim to be watchmen, who claim to be prophets, who claim to be apostles, what have you. But no one is warning the people of what is coming upon the earth no one is seeing through the eyes of god to tell the people what is happening in the world and to show through whom it is happening and this is why i say brothers and sisters for the most part the body of christ the church of jesus christ or those that are in the church of jesus christ who say that they are ministers of the gospel are not warning the people they are compromised why because the bible says men love the praises of men more than they love the praises which come from god alone many churches today are being established through government funds i mean you can look at the names of some of the churches jesus is not even in the name and so that uh, uh, you know it's a clear indication for the most part that uh some churches are compromised they can't say certain things Amen. I said I wanted to keep this message short. Uh, so, what am I speaking of today? The watchman is to blow the trumpet. The people are to, are to uh, hear the warning coming from the watchman. Uh, this is what I am doing. This is what I have been doing for the longest, brothers and sisters, trying to warn 
men and women, especially those in the body of Christ, what is going on, what God is doing in the earth. And many have uh, refused to hear, and that is fine because the Bible says if they refuse to hear and they are taken by the sword, then their blood is on their own heads. But because I am sending out this warning and showing you this Democratic Party that is anti-God, anti-Christ, anti-Christian is against you, brothers and sisters. They are led by the spirit of Antichrist, and they don't care uh, about Christians and Christian values. But some are still blinded and continue to follow after these individuals. So the order of the of the day, the most important thing, the, the, the agenda on the Democratic Party today is to get Trump at any cost. And as I've said before, ask yourself why. You see, President Trump didn't need to run for president. The man had billions of dollars. He could have continued on living his life, uh, you know, not taking the pressure that he has been subjected to, the ridicule uh, that he has been subjected to. He, he could have uh, bypassed all of this, but why did he do it? Because he saw what was happening. He saw what was going on in the government, and he saw how America was being led into, he may not have understood it, but into a one world governmental system. And so he decided to do something about it. You know, many, many people have said politicians are all alike. They say one thing, but they do another. And so you have held on to that belief system and that way of thinking. But when this man came along, he said what he would do and he did what he said, but that is not enough for some. They still fell victim to the lies of the media. Now this indictment, these charges that have been levied against him, many are saying there is no basis for it. Uh, it, it doesn't have, there's no substance to it. It's just a waste of time. And I've told you before, it's, an, it's a distraction to get you off of seeing what President Biden has done and how he has harmed our nation. So many have said that it is just a distraction. Well, uh, many in the Democratic Party even, you know, many who, uh, who, who do not think highly of Trump have uh, even said these things. Amen. You have people like uh, Mitt Romney and uh, Austin Amash, who's not uh, someone who likes Trump. But yet he said in this indictment, after reading D.A. Bragg's indictment of Trump and accompanying statement of facts, I'm stunned any prosecutor would move forward with this. It's even flimsier than we were led to believe. 34 attack, 34 stacks, stack counts, bootstrapped to an unstated crime to manufacture felony charges. So he even said himself, this is ridiculous. And then uh, you have uh, Mitt Romney. Mitt Romney said, the prosecutor's overreach sets a dangerous precedent for criminalizing political opponents and damages the public's faith in our justice system. Amen. These two individuals, Democrats, who are not uh, fond of President Trump, they can see that there is something uh, amiss going on here. They can see it. Amen. And they know that this is wrong. It sets a precedent, he said. It, 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 it messes up the, uh, uh, the legal system. And this government, Biden and Harris, they have weaponized the, the DOJ. They have weaponized uh, uh, 
the FBI. We've seen that when they sent the FBI out to harass and to uh, harass and list uh, parents who were concerned about what their uh, the children were being taught in school, labeling them as domestic terrorists. You know, so we've seen how this uh, political uh, party has done these things. And this is all what it is, ladies and gentlemen. Now, these are the not only are not the only two Democrats who have come out and said this. There are many who have come out and uh, in opposition of what is going on. But it don't matter. You know, the hatred for Trump is so great that many who hear this video, their eyes are sealed shut because of the hatred they have for this man. Like I said, ladies and gentlemen, why are they doing this? Because Trump is a threat to their new world order agenda. Not only Trump, but anyone who stands in the way of their agenda. Look what has happened to Elon Musk. Before he took over ownership of Twitter, he was left alone. Nobody said anything about him. But when he acquired Twitter and he exposed what the Democratic Party was doing, conspiring to silence conservatives, he began to take uh, some shots. And even he began to lose money. This, ladies and gentlemen, is how this establishment is run. I've told you about George Soros, amen, who is staunch. New World Order, One World a Globalist, funding many projects that are in favorable to a one world governmental system. Abin Bragg, the attorney, the DA, is funded by George Soros. And then this attorney ran on the promise of indicting Trump. But one of the things uh, leading into this vote for the Manhattan District Attorney's Office, I know a lot of people are wondering, uh, whoever has this job, are they going to convict Donald Trump? Look, that, that, that is uh, the number one issue. We know he's investigating. And what I'll say is I'm the only, I was the first to announce against Cy Vance. I too have a lot of issues, which is why I decided to run. I'm the candidate in the race who has the experience with, with Donald Trump. I was the chief deputy in the attorney general's office. We sued the Trump administration over 100 times uh, for the Muslim travel ban, for family separation at the border, for shen shenanigans with the census. Uh, so I know how to, to litigate uh, with him. I also led the team that did the Trump Foundation case. So uh, I'm ready to go wherever the facts take me and to inherit that case. And I think, you know, It'd be hard to argue with the fact that that's that'd be the most important, uh, most high profile case. Uh, and I've seen him up front and seen the lawlessness that he can do. And so, brothers and sisters, can you think for yourselves? Can you see? Can you read between the lines and see what is happening here? Like I said, this is not about Donald Trump, but it's about anybody who would dare stick their finger in the eye of the beast and expose his dirtiness this is what's happening ladies and gentlemen and so while you are busy celebrating and salivating over this indictment the new world order agenda is going on what do i mean well let me show you i told you some time back about how the government this government they wanted to um, ban gas stoves. Yes, they wanted to ban gas, gas stoves. But they received such backlash, they pushed back for a minute. But now it's, it's back again. Not only that, but they also wanted to, this is, this is going to probably make you laugh, but they also want to, tell you what light bulbs you can use in your home. The 
the Biden administration moving toward moving forward with light bulb bans in coming weeks. Amen. This is what they're doing, ladies and gentlemen. They wanted to ban gas stoves. Now they want to tell you which light bulbs you can use in your house. And before it's all said and done, they want to tell you uh, how long you can run your electric, your, 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 your air conditioning during the summer, how long you can run your heating during the winter. You know, so they want to com take complete control over you, ladies and gentlemen. I told you in my video, a uh, crypto government, nine months ago, how the government, this government, wanted to implement a cryptocurrency. Not Bitcoin, but this is a government controlled currency. They wanted to implement it. They want to do away with the dollar. And I'm going to show you a video. Tucker Carson's uh, investigation, how this is all coming about. And so they want to get rid of uh, the dollar, and the government wants to introduce, amen, uh, this government electronic currency. This is the currency that the government wants to introduce. Man, this is... Uh, what is called the Fed Now program that the government is launching in July, I believe. I'll just read a little bit about it. You can go to the uh, government website and you can read about it yourself. This is something that they're launching in July. Now, we've heard about the banks closing, uh, some of the things that happened with some of the banks around the world. The U.S. government now wants to implement this. Listen, about the FedNow service. The Federal Reserve Banks are developing a FedNow service to facilitate nationwide reach of instant payment services by financial institutions, talking about banks, any financial institution, regardless of size or geographical location. Small banks, big banks, small credit unions, big credit unions, geographical locations united states africa you know australia it doesn't matter they want to implement this around the clock okay regardless of size or geographic location around the clock every day of the year through financial institutions participating in the fed now service businesses and individuals will be able to send and receive instant payments at any time of day and recipients will have full access to funds immediately giving them greater flexibility to manage their money and make time sensitive payments they make it sound so good except access will be provided through the federal reserve fed line network this is a brand new thing that they're rolling out which serves more than 10,000 financial institutions directly through their agents. More information, for more information, visit FedNowExplorer.org. Okay, so this is the system that the government is implementing, amen, to uh, distribute currency. They want to get rid of they want to get rid of paper money, and they're implementing this. And in that same video, cryptocurrency, this organization, the, mind, the name of it slips me right now, but they, they had a meeting where they were fading out. They talked about fading out money and implementing this uh, government digital currency. And this is what it is, ladies and gentlemen. It is a digital currency. So if it's digital, that means... That the government has the uh, ability to stop your flow of money. Okay, so if you don't comply with what they are saying, uh, if you run your electricity for too long, if you drive too many miles 
in your car for a month or a day a week or whatever they can cut off your services they can cut off your money now you don't believe what i'm saying but if you would look just go, go outside to your house look at your meter it is a digital meter the man doesn't have to come and cut you off they can sit there right in the office push a button cut you off so while we're getting trump we're so happy about that the world government is implementing their plans many of you should be praying many first of all many of you need to ask the lord to forgive you amen for your hatred and you need to repent and ask god to intervene on behalf of our nation because if he doesn't <laughs> There won't be much. Uh, there won't be much left. We're all going to be imprisoned and slaves to the government. Amen. Now I want to show you this video. Tucker Carlson, how he shows how this government using Ukraine, uh, funding Ukraine, you know, and you know, thinking they're helping Ukraine win this war, but this is all a scheme. It's all a plan to uh, cause the dollar to die out among other nations in the world. And so I want to show you this video. It's about six minutes long. And I'll talk more about it after the video. America printed the U.S. dollar. We controlled the global reserve currency. And that meant that for us, money was cheap. We had privileges that nobody else in the world had. It's been very nice, but what would happen if it ended? You don't even really want to think about that because the consequences would be too ugly, really ugly. So we thought at the time that the real threat to our future wasn't just the billions we were sending to Zelensky. That was reckless, but probably not going to end America. The real threat was the unprecedented economic sanctions that Joe Biden was allowed to, in fact, encouraged to impose. Those sanctions, you'll recall, were supposed to hurt Russia. But even in March of last year, it seemed obvious they were going to hurt the United States much more than they hurt Russia. Here's what we said 13 months ago. We should prepare to lose our position as holder of the world's reserve currency. That is happening in slow motion. It's unmistakable. Now, the Biden people seem to have no idea this is going on, or maybe they want it to happen. Joe Biden was up there at the State of the Union bragging about how he took 30 points off the Russian ruble in a single day. Hooray! Good for us! But once we stop celebrating our win, the destruction of the Russian economy, they deserve it. You gotta wonder, is there a downside to this? Could it be a Pyrrhic victory? Let's see. These policies have driven Russia, China, India, Turkey, and other countries to accelerate their flight from the U.S. dollar. Now, to be clear, that's the majority of the global economy. Listen. This may be the most reckless and destructive thing any American president has ever done to the United States. The purpose of the sanctions has always been and continues to be deterrence. But let's also recognize the unique nature of the sanctions that we have outlined. These are some of the greatest sanctions, if not the, the, the strongest that we've ever issued. We're right now enforcing powerful economic sanctions. Mm. We're cutting off Russia's largest banks in the international financial system, preventing Russia's central bank from defending the Russian ruble, ruble, making Putin's $630 billion war fund worthless. You watch. Amen. Everything that these people have touched is going to pot. Everything. They have fumbled. They have messed up everything in this nation and for this nation. But nobody is concerned about it. The, the, the pastors won't say anything about it. Uh, you know, they won't say anything about it. Let's just continue to hold our conferences and appreciations and all of this. And uh, everything is going to be all right. No, but the Lord told us to watch. He told us to pray. You watch that and you wonder if they really believe what they were telling you. If they really did believe that, they're stupider than they looked. Mm. These sanctions were never going to work in the way they promised because unlike the United States, Russia does not have a late stage finance economy. 
Russian oligarchs do not get rich from credit default swaps. They get rich from selling actual things that people need in order to live. Oil, natural gas, iron, fertilizer, coal, wheat. By some measures, Russia has the largest resource economy in the world. So a year later, despite the sanctions you were told are the greatest ever devised, the Russian ruble is just as strong against the U.S. dollar as it was before the war in Ukraine. <laughs> so we didn't really hurt Russia with those sanctions, certainly not long term. Who'd we hurt? Ourselves. E.J. Antoni and Peter St. Ange wrote an incisive piece in The Daily Caller last week that yes. explains part of why this happened. Quote, a critical feature of a reserve currency is its apolitical nature, which Biden is now gutting. Mm. After both parties in Washington destroyed the dollar's stability with inflation, now the Biden administration has chosen to wield the dollar as a weapon. Together, these two factors send a message to foreigners, which is they should get out while they still can. In response to Russia's war with Ukraine, the U.S. froze the dollar reserves of Russia's central bank. To be clear, these were not American assets. Mm. These were dollars owned by the Russian central bank and the Russian people. The seizure was intended to cause bank runs and collapse Russia's credit system. It didn't work. Instead, it exposed the Biden administration's willingness to violate the trillions of dollars that foreigners rightfully own. The danger of this precedent is difficult to overstate, end quote. Now, all of us saw that happening, but you couldn't say anything because Russia bad. We can't even watch their hockey teams. All right. But what do you think happened next as we were jumping up and down and talking about Winston Churchill? Well, smart, smart foreigners, and there are some, believe it or not, started to dump the U.S. dollar. Why? Because the U.S. dollar was no longer a reliable store of value. Suddenly, it was a political weapon that could be wielded at will against anyone who held it. A political weapon. And I've just told you, this, this administration has politicized, has uh, weaponized the DOJ, the FBI, even now, the, the justice system. It has all been legalized, uh, uh, weaponized. So what if you had a border dispute with one of your neighbors that the State Department hadn't authorized? Or what if you accidentally criticized transgender theology and <laughs> irritated the human rights campaign? Mm. Well, the U.S. government might denounce you as immoral and then confiscate all your money. How are they going to do that? Through this new system that they're rolling out in July. Fed now. Do your own research. Go look it up. Don't, don't believe what I'm saying. Do your own research and look it up. Because they just did that with Russia. Mm. And as a result, dollars began to look much less appealing to the rest of the world. And so de-dollarization began. And it has accelerated at remarkable speed, almost without comment in the American media, over the last year. So if you wanted the rest of the world to trust your currency, the last thing you would do is use it as a weapon or print too much of it. Printing yes, too good. much of your currency causes inflation, and that saps the value of the currency. No one wants to hold a currency that is worth less consistently every year. That's sixth grade economics, but Joe Biden can't be bothered with that. So he's printing more money. Here he is last week announcing another $10 billion check. Not for you or East Palestine or anyone in our country who needs it, but for foreign governments. Working in close cooperation with the United States Congress, we plan to add another $690 million for new funding for the presidential initiative over the next two years. And over the course of three years, my administration intends to work with Congress to commit $9.5 billion across all our efforts to advance democracy around the world. We're all safer when that occurs. <laughs> advanced democracy. Amen. Advanced democracy. What democracy? their democracy see this party wants a a one-party government they want to be in control they want to maintain control this is why they have allowed so many illegals to come in in hopes to persuading them to vote democratic so they can stay in power ladies and gentlemen this nation cannot take four more years of this messed up government but this is what they want to do. And so this is what we are seeing happening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. They have printed money uh, knowing that it would create inflation. And then 
uh, Joe Biden and his cronies uh, have gone over and seized money that belonged to other people, weaponized the, uni the, U the U.S. dollar, which now people are getting away from the U.S. dollar. It is all starting a tumbling effect, a snowball effect. And now we're seeing the dollar being devalued. So there you have it, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen. Amen. I pray that you understood what was being said. If you don't, go back and watch the video again. While we are celebrating and trying to get Trump, the New World Order is busy doing their bidding. Amen. So, I, you know, I've done my part to send a warning. You can hear it and receive it, or you can dismiss it. You know, uh, I, I am not going to uh, lose sleep worrying about it. Because every man, as the Bible says, we have to work out our own salvation with fear and tremble. This is what's happening, brothers and sisters. The New World Order agenda, the socialistic agenda of this Democratic Party is moving full steam ahead and I pray God that we don't have a war before time comes to elect a new president you know if they can't get Trump with this indictment look for a war to break out brothers and sisters amen this is brother Williams God bless you I pray that you will seek after the Lord with all of your heart until next time be blessed